California Air Resources Board has recently adopted a number of regulations to reduce the exhaust emissions of toxic particulate matter from heavy duty diesel engines. As shown here, these regulations affect nearly all of the heavy duty diesels currently operating every day all over the state. Depending on the individual regulation for a given diesel engine application, the engine owner may have a number of ways to comply with this program, including replacing the engines with cleaner engines, retiring the engines from service, or retrofitting the engines. This series of video modules will concentrate on retrofitting engines. This video course is designed to help the administrator of a heavy duty diesel engine fleet bring the fleet into compliance with the retrofit regulations. This module, Module 1-1, provides an introduction of the retrofit program. Modules 1-2 through 1-5 will take you, as fleet administrator, through the required processes in more detail in order to successfully retrofit your engines and maintain program compliance. When viewing for the first time, it is recommended that you view these instructional modules in sequence. We begin with the introduction to the retrofit program. Hello, hey Adam. Hey Tom, good to see you. Hey, nice to see you. Thanks for coming over to the facility. You know, I've been looking through the retrofit program materials, but it's a lot to grasp quickly. We have several types of diesel engines in operation. I'm not certain how to begin. I have a lot of retrofit program information on my laptop, so let's begin. Why is this program necessary? Well, it's necessary because diesels are very dirty. Here, let me show you a little bit more here. When you see thick exhaust smoke belching from heavy duty diesel engines like this, that smoke is comprised of particulate matter, or diesel PM, which contains toxic air contaminants that we all breathe. The older the engine model, the more particulate is produced. Our goal is to get all vehicles as clean as 2007 and newer. Okay, well hold on, just, just what is particulate? All diesel engines produce a considerable exhaust particulates due to incomplete combustion of the fuel. It's a byproduct of burning diesel fuel. Diesels emit many millions of these microscopic particles for every hour that they operate. Here's a microscopic photo of a particle. Unfortunately, many toxic chemicals typically formed during the combustion process latch on to the jagged surface of these carbon particles. When these particles enter the human lung, the toxic compounds can penetrate the lung and enter the bloodstream. In 1998, after years of study, the ARB identified these as toxic air contaminants and found them to be cancer-causing. Diesel exhaust leads to thousands of premature deaths each year in California. It also aggravates asthma in children, causes people to lose work days, reduces atmospheric visibility, and increases smog. Fortunately, there is something very important that you as a fleet administrator can do about it. Many ARB verified diesel particulate filters are extremely effective retrofits that reduce harmful particulate matter by 85% or more. When these devices are retrofitted to your engines, your engines will become significantly cleaner. Visible exhaust smoke will be gone, and the toxicity associated with these diesel emissions will be virtually eliminated. Filters and other retrofits are available for nearly all types of heavy-duty diesel engines and engine applications. So is this retrofit program necessary? Absolutely. The health and air quality benefits for the California citizens are overwhelming. I can see the importance of this program, but is there any way that diesel engine owners can not comply with these regulations? Are there penalties for not complying? Heavy duty diesel engine owners must comply with the regulations. They are not voluntary. Over one million heavy duty diesel engines operate in California. The serious health concerns with diesel emissions are so high that this regulatory program must be rigorously enforced. ARB has a number of enforcement methods. Later today, we'll focus on the diesel owner's reporting requirements, maintaining fleet records under compliance, allowing ARB inspectors to enter your fleet facility and inspect your engines, being aware that ARB inspectors can site your engines at random roadside locations and other sites for non-compliance, 
Keep in mind that failure to comply with the program can lead to citation penalties ranging from $300 to as high as $10,000 per day for each non-compliant engine depending on the gravity of the violation. It's much cheaper to comply, but more than that, it's a highly effective program to reduce toxic emissions from diesel exhaust that, that benefits all of us. About these particular filters, though, how, how can I be sure they're going to work? That's a good question. Retrofit device manufacturers must obtain approval from ARB to sell their products. All device manufacturers must conduct extensive emissions testing in labs like this, as well as conduct durability testing for 1,000 hours of operation in order to be verified by the ARB and allowed for sale. Additionally, the manufacturers must provide a warranty of up to five years for each of their retrofit products. In this way, the manufacturers and installers of these devices must stand behind their products when they are installed on your engine. However, you must make sure you have the correct device for your engine and its operating conditions. Proper engine maintenance and retrofit maintenance is also a must. We'll discuss these points in more detail later. There are three levels of particulate reduction effectiveness corresponding to the three main types of retrofit devices that are available. The most effective retrofit, a level 3 device, is typically a wall flow diesel particulate filter, or DPF, which is 85% effective or higher in reducing particulate. Air B regulations require most diesel engine applications to utilize level 3 devices, unless there are technical or other reasons to resort to less effective devices. The next level device down is the level 2 device, which reduces about 50% of particulate emissions. Partial flow or flow through filters are typically level 2 devices. Lastly, level 1 devices are generally diesel oxidation catalysts and are only about 25% effective. Some ARB regulations do not recognize the use of level 1 devices towards compliance. Well, how do DPFs reduce particulate? Well, take a look on my laptop at this expanded view of a DPF. It's, it's retrofitted to an engine usually by installing it in place of the engine's muffler. Engine exhaust is naturally forced through the micropores of a ceramic wall in the DPF. Exhaust vapors and gases can pass through the wall, but almost all the harmful particulate is trapped inside the filters you can see. However, in order not to plug up the filter, the trapped particles must sooner or later be combusted similar to a self-cleaning oven. We call this regeneration. The DPF manufacturers have designed two major ways to induce regeneration. One way is called passive regeneration. When the engine is operating with a sufficient exhaust temperature, the trapped soot particles are then burned off with a minor amount of ash left over. Regeneration prevents the DPF from plugging up with particulate. Engine applications utilize DPS with passive regeneration as long as the engine exhaust temperatures are high enough along with any other operating conditions that must be met. The proper conditions are listed in ARB's approval document for the retrofit called the Executive Order. Interesting. Uh, what's the other method for inducing regeneration? The other method is called active regeneration. This process does not rely on exhaust temperature. Instead, the retrofit system utilizes an outside source of energy, such as electricity or fuel, to initiate regeneration. Okay, the vehicle is requiring a regeneration, so you would remove the protective cap and install the high voltage electrical plug. Lock it down, and the system is now regenerating, and um, should be done by the morning. No matter which regeneration method is used, there'll be some small amount of ash left over. This ash comes from part of the diesel fuel that will not burn. Over time, this non-combustible ash will build up on the DPF. So, what happens to this ash? The ash would have to physically be removed from time to time from the DPF, just as if you were to remove the ash from your wood fireplace from your, from your home. Depending on your engine application, you would probably need to have the DPF cleaned about once a year, and that is done with special equipment. The DPF will be removed from your engine and placed in a DPF cleaning machine, whereby the ash will be removed safely. The cleaning process must meet manufacturers and hazardous waste requirements. DPF ash is considered a hazardous waste in California. DPF ash must be removed per strict regulations. Many fleets just send their DPFs to companies who specialize in cleaning. After cleaning, the DPF can be reused as before, and it will last for hundreds of thousands of hours of operation as long as it and your engine is properly maintained. While the DPF is being cleaned, can I run my engines without it? 
In fact, can I just remove the DPF for any reason at all? No, you're not allowed to operate your engines without any retrofits at, at any time. When a DPF is removed for cleaning, the engine cannot be operated. The original core of the DPF must come back to the original vehicle or group of vehicles using the same device in your fleet. Sometimes, fleets purchase an extra core to be installed in its place. Essentially, retrofits are to remain on the engines until the engines are retired or removed from service in California. Now, you just mentioned something about performing engine maintenance. Is that particularly important for DPFs? Well, proper engine maintenance is a must. Some persons mistakenly think that since a DPF will mask heavily smoking exhaust, that they can let their engine maintenance go. That is the biggest misconception about DPFs. A heavily smoking engine due to bad fuel injectors, bad turbocharger, or any other problem that causes high smoke will quickly plug up a DPF. It will be overwhelmed with particulate, far too much to be regenerated in a controlled way. The engine exhaust back pressure will rise to very high levels, and ultimately the plug DPF will cause the engine to stall and not restart. On the other hand, if regeneration does occur, it may result in excessive heat, which could crack the internal wall of the DPF. This would destroy the DPF, and you could lose your product warranty. Another common engine maintenance issue is an engine that consumes excessive amounts of lube oil. The lube oil in the exhaust can coat the DPF walls, thereby plugging up the DPF. Engines with high smoke or high oil consumption must be repaired or rebuilt before any type of DPF is installed. The engine maintenance problems are the number one cause of DPF problems, so after DPF installation, a strict periodic engine maintenance schedule must be followed. I had no idea how important engine maintenance is for retrofits. You better believe it. It is so important that device manufacturers will not install retrofit on a poorly maintained engine. The engine must stay in its original specification listed by the engine manufacturer. Otherwise, the device is not approved or verified for the engine. Later on, I will cover the proper engine maintenance practices for DPFs in more detail. We'll discuss using standardized maintenance checks for oil consumption, fuel injectors, and so on. But what if I use additives in my diesel fuel? Uh, any problem with that? As mentioned before, the conditions for operating the device are listed on ARB's executive order. It will mention the specific fuel requirements for the device to properly function. For example, carb ultra low sulfur diesel, 20% biodiesel, and other such fuels may be listed. However, fuel additives are typically not allowed unless an additive is approved by the retrofit manufacturer and is listed in the executive order. By the way, a fleet cannot dump its waste oil into its diesel fuel supply. These old-fashioned practices are illegal and will destroy DPFs. Okay, now let's recap. I understand why the retrofit program is important for everyone's health and that the program compliance is strictly enforced by ARB. I also understand why wall flow DPFs function and then regeneration options as well as the need for top-notch engine maintenance. I've learned something about the procedure for removing ash from the DPF. So understanding all this, where do I go from here? How do I get retrofits on my engines? There are a number of steps that you will need to take, but we'll go through those steps such as how you should proceed with selecting the retrofits for your various engines, what technical data must be first obtained to confirm your selections, and the key items you should expect to receive from your installer. We'll also cover the essential engine and retrofit maintenance practices and retrofit program enforcement and compliance. Well, that all sounds great. Uh, when can we get started? Well, let's take a little break before we continue. Be sure to watch the remaining video modules in this series, Emissions Retrofits, What Diesel Fleet Administrators Need to Know. For more information, or if you have any questions, please consult these sources of information provided by the Air Resources Board.